Well, welcome. We're going to start in just a moment, but this is an initial welcome. Welcome to Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Berkeley on this Easter day where we proclaim Christ is risen. We are doing our best to get through this time together and being there for each other with the grace of God. So welcome to visitors here gathered on Zoom or those who will watch later on YouTube. Please visit our website for more information about Shepherd of the Hills at www. Dot S-O-T-H-B dot O-R-G. Today we celebrate Christ risen from the grave. The power of love has overcome the power of death and sin. And we are beneficiaries of God's grace through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is our golden nugget. What a gift we have that guides us and which we can share our treasure and our life. We will begin with the reading of the welcome statement by Joni. Welcome to longtime Lutherans, Christians from every tradition and people new to the faith. Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts or do not believe. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to people of every age and size, color and culture, gender identity, sexual orientation and marital status, ability and challenge. Welcome to believers, questioners, and questioning believers. This is a place where you are welcome to celebrate and sorrow, rejoice and recover. This is a place where lives are made new. Welcome on this day. Now for our Easter greeting, and one thing we need to be prepared for is that those of you who have bells, that the bells are ready. Okay, alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. <laughs> Alleluia. Yes, please feel free to unmute. Mute. An empty cross, an empty tomb. Now he lives. Christ lives triumphant over death. Alleluia. 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 Risen to assert the power of love over the power of evil. Risen to bring us all into new life. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Risen to gather us as God's own. Risen to bring us into a new kind of community. Risen to reveal God's love for all creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Now for the prayer of the day. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and our hearts the risen life we share with Christ. Help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So during the Word for All Ages today, uh, it will be a video, but I'm hoping it's an interactive video where you will be invited to participate. There's pauses in it and even ring your bell. So now the video, the Word for All Ages. Hello, this is a Word for All Ages. And when you watch this, it'll be Easter morning. And we are celebrating that Christ is risen from the grave. And today I have a gold box. And I wonder oh, what is in that's the Laurel box on this yeah. Easter morning. Bells. When do we ring the bells? When we say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since this is pre-recorded. Of course. We sing read the bells when we hear Hallelujah. Now there's something else in this box. It's a little box of its own and it actually says Avengers on it. Oh, I think this is the box of the, that was the only thing that was there. So I'm not going to read too much into the meaning of the word Avengers here. And if you do and you want to have a conversation about that, let's talk later. <laughs> but let's look inside this box. And I'm going to open it. But I'm having a hard time opening this box. It just won't come. Can you help me? Maybe Dear I need Lord. some words of encouragement like, you know, you can do it. Hang Dear in there. Lord, please you know, help whatever us the usual share words of encouragement are. You, you can do it. Please help Pastor Sharon open this box. Tear it Thank open. That, that's helping. That's helping. <laughs> Almost Ripper. Bad. I think there's something we need. Put some elbow juice creeps into it. Can anybody pray? Thank pray. you. Pray. Oh, look. Lord, it's please open. help. And look, gum sticks. Now I'm going to take out some of these gum sticks and let's we can have some gum. But, oh goodness, yeah. it's empty. What does that mean that it's empty? Well, the tumor's empty. I don't understand. Well, our gospel story today tells the story after Jesus had died and been laid in the tomb, that the women, Mary Magdalene and Mary and the mother of Salome, they go to see and care for the dead body of Jesus. And as they're walking, they wonder how they'll get in. And they get there and the stone is rolled away. And there's somebody sitting in white. And they person says, Christ is not here. They were surprised, just like I was surprised to see the empty wrapper. I wonder what that was like for you to see an empty wrapper when you were expecting a piece of gum. Well, that's probably close to how the women felt until 
they hear this wonderful news. Christ is risen. You say Christ is risen indeed, and what follows that? Christ yes. is risen Hallelujah. And you say, yeah. Hallelujah. And one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which brings us to say, thank you, God, that Christ is risen from the day grave, and we can see what this means in our life, for this is good news. Now we're going to listen to some music that's an arrangement of Jesus Loves Me. First reading is from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine stained clear, drained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Before we have the sermon, we will have the gospel reading, and that is from the 16th chapter of the book of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place where they have laid him. But go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out. They fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved people of God, grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, one, our sustainer and our guide. And let's have a good moment of saying Christ is risen. Alleluia. And let's just shake those bells. Yeah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Wow, to be gathered here on Easter morning, still on Zoom, what a special Easter, and it is special in a lot of ways. It said on very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance to the tomb. A passage blocked by a very large stone that we infer from the reading that these women could not move by themselves. What does it mean that they asked, who will roll away the stone as they keep walking towards the tomb? So I 
reached out, held out my hand, and I asked some of you to give me your thoughts on this. So Jeannie says, when she first heard the question, she thought it was like a joke. Her people are on a boat with all their provisions, yet there's no way to get in the food because somebody says, I thought you were going to bring the can open. But in looking deeper, Jeannie says, they don't turn back. They ask the question, but they just keep going to the tomb, hoping for the best. John wrote, I suppose it's a statement of faith. They're going to anoint Jesus, even though they don't know who will roll away the stone. They are going without regard for the difficulty. Now, Polly writes with the imagination of one being with a woman, we're walking along with spices and wondering how we'd get the stone rolled away because it was humongous. And we, when we get there, that huge thing has rolled itself away or has been rolled away. Thankfully, Polly is our Greek professor that reminds us of the tense of the verb is in the past and rather passive. It's been rolled away or it's rolled itself away, providing that there's some special agent that has made the rolling happen, like an earthquake or a blinding angel. It's always good to have different voices and Sam adds to this because this question calls upon him to reflect on the past when women weren't church leaders, but now are. And then Sam reflects as he signed up for, to attend the Synod Assembly where the question for our Synod is, who will be our next bishop? And that will be decided in May as Sam and Jeannie and I officially attend on behalf of Shepherd of the Hills. And then, but then Sam asked, who will be our next pastor in a time when guys and gals are hiding out and laying low and really don't want to go to church? That's a truthful question. So we have Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, keep moving towards the tomb. As Jeannie says, they don't turn back. As John says, they keep going, knowing it will be difficult. And as Polly helps us understand the stone is already rolled away. And Sam moves us into the future of what it means in our lives, in the past, the present, and the future. Of course, we don't know who rolled the stone away as it's already moved. We do hear of a boy dressed in white telling them Christ is risen. But then the women are told to tell the disciples and Peter and it says, with that, they fled the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And this is where the gospel ends. This is where the gospel of Mark ends by accounts of many scholars. And I think we need to sit in this space this very special text with its very special ending that leaves us open-ended on this very special Easter where we are walking into a future where we do not know what to expect. After of a year of what we never expected to happen, a worldwide pandemic that has affected all of us. Yet, this worldwide pandemic has further exposed the systems of injustice in the world as we see who got COVID, who got treated for COVID and how it lays out of the statistics around people of color. So as we sit in this open space, we can look at this text and we can say, well, the women didn't speak just because they are women. And that might could have been a traditional way of looking at it. But fear is not inherent to these women. They already walked towards a difficult situation to go to the tomb of someone who was hung as a criminal to openly care for his body. And they walked with the expectation that the stone would be rolled back. But they are afraid to speak especially when it comes to speak of something unbelievable. 
that a dead person can be raised. But it's also that they sit in a system that doesn't honor their voices. As with the crucifixion, that exposes the system of injustice and oppression, this resurrection story exposes a system that discounts the voices of women or the disenfranchised. As we need to make time in our Easter season as it comes before us in the weeks to come to look at systems in our world and systems within the church and how it affects us and even defines us. But this story gives us the space to wonder, to open up, to walk into an open space to question, to even question the resurrection, to question, to believe, or to not believe, and still be people of God together. We all have our own individual takes in a church that proclaims resurrection. And we are given the chance to ask what resurrection means in our life today and in our community and how we are connected to one another. And with that, we can say, because we are having these conversations and these thoughts and these stories in the Bible today, that those stories were shared. We are people to God together today because those stories could not be contained. And we hear them and have place to share them 2,000 years later where we can say Christ is risen and Christ is risen today and with us in the Holy Spirit. Now, Polly shared with me a little more. She shared that a colleague of hers, Ann Wire from San Francisco Theological Seminary, has written a book contending that the gospel of Mark is a story that originally passed from women to women. Can you imagine that? I think a contention like that assumes that women created a safe space among themselves where their voices could be heard, where they could speak, where they could believe what they had seen and others would believe with them. And then in the long run, the shared story gets permeated out into a group of people. For this is the basis of what the Gospel of Mark is written on and also plays a big role in the writing of the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. This Christian story, for God is revealed as stronger than demons as Jesus goes around casting out demons in the book of Mark. And God is stronger than illness as Jesus heals and restores people in the book of Mark and stronger than Jesus, Peter's denial or anyone's denial and stronger than Pilate or the Roman government's oppression or stronger than any system that silences anyone's voice. Jesus Christ's resurrection reveals that God is stronger than death. God renews and revives and lifts up. This God of grace, this word of grace is our golden nugget. It is not dependent on us. It's totally dependent on God's love. And God's love is here and this is God's grace. And God is at work. We are being renewed revived and uplifted in a time where a tiny little virus took us down around the world it's now a simple one or two shot vaccine that is lifting us up out of this quagmire yes we have a lot to work learn still about this virus and how to deal with it in the future but hope is here and we are starting to emerge to come out of our cocoons after a year and with the question about how we will be in this space. How will this gospel live in us and move in us? Will we speak of a God who listens to all? Will we share that God values all and loves us all unconditionally? How will this word get to the weak, the powerless, the disenfranchised, that God's grace is unmerited, 
and unconditional. How will this world get up into the hills of Berkeley to our neighbors who are living alone or caring for one another in their older age or whatever disabilities might be among us? How will this word be carried into the future beginning with the least? A word that says a hierarchy is flipped on its side to become a table a table of mutuality and accountability. Yes, Ched Meyer says the gospel of Mark is meant to call us to mutual accountability, to call us to speak and speak truth, to be in relationship with the poor and the disenfranchised, to speak the good news of grace to the poor and do the work of evening out the table we will have to admit that we are biased. We would have to admit how we fit into a system, but we can do that because we are freed from shame. We can step back and look and then see how do we move forward into the future? Because like the ending of the gospel of Mark, we are in this open ended time, but we are not alone. We've got our precious golden nugget of grace, this precious word that is so amazing that helps fulfill our lives and a word that can fill the, fulfill the lives of others, that empowers us to walk forth in faith with the trust of the women who can move towards that tomb. We can journey together forward in together in a new time in this space of God's grace. For this is true. God is strong, stronger than death, stronger than oppression. And this love of God's is shown in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it is good and it endures forever. Amen.
And now Bryce and I will lead you through the creed of Easter celebration. Together we celebrate the living God. Ever present here before time began and here after time will end. The creator of all things manifesting a limitless imagination in whose image we are made and in whose promises we trust, we rejoice in God. Together let us celebrate the risen Christ. Born into poverty, experiencing earthly joys and limitations, great teacher and example of our human potential, the one who brought life to others and who has raised us to new life. We rejoice in the Christ. Together, let us celebrate the risen Christ. To the Promised, Holy Spirit. Promised by Jesus appearing on the day of Pentecost, inspiring us, guiding us, binding us into community, leading us to acts of mercy and service. We rejoice in the Holy Spirit. We celebrate the triune God through the great tree three in one. Alleluia. Amen. And now for the prayers of the people. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who, promise, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Receive us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Disentangle us from destructive patterns and bring us to grace-filled pathways. Draw together people of all nations and languages, reveal new possibilities, and inspire new beginnings. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid of con or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. We pray wow. especially for Ava, Gina, Carol, Rosie, Dorla, Nina, wow. Lillian, Florence, Esther, Clifford, Bob, Frida, Don, and Nat. Wow. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we were sh shared at home, at work, and in our community. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For whom and what else do the people of God pray? I would invite you to unmute to share your prayers. We pray for Larry, the uncle of Angela and the Galakowski family, uh, for his recovery. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is mercy great. Is great. I pray for uh, young people, for our children, teenagers, and uh, young adults. We pray for those who are heading back to school or not, or some combination. Um, bless them and sustain them through any change and bless any educators as well. Receive us, oh God. Your mercy is great. I pray for Jenny Hacker's brother and sister-in-law who are both suffering from COVID. Receive us, oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for her neighbors down the street who lost their father this week due to early um, brain hemorrhage. Very sad story. 
Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. I pray for my brother, Cipriano Ayalin, who passed away on the 25th. Mm. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all the saints who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to prepare for the sharing of the peace, and we have some visitors, and welcome to them. But uh, you may feel free to unmute, and you can jingle your bells all you want. But the peace of the Lord be with you all. Welcome, visitors. And now for our thank offering. The thank offering for Lent is chosen by Ali. At the time of her b'mitzvah in lieu of gifts, she directed people to donate to the Contra Costa County Food Bank. The food bank serves to distribute purchased and donated perishable and non-perishable to low-income folks and to other nonprofit organizations, serving the ill, needy, and children while raising public awareness on issues of food and hunger. I would invite you to unmute to share your own thank offering. Well, I would say there is a lot to be thankful for and I can't name them all, but um, I was just astounded to see the lovely slides that Logan made. And, and Logan puts, most often puts the music together. And so then thank you for the, the beautiful music with the singers and the musicians, um, how, how wonderful and how fortunate we are. I'd like to thank Gretchen for the most wonderful box of cookies that we all received yesterday. That was so delightful and I just really appreciate it. And um, I tasted many of them and they're really good. Thank you, thank you. And also the youth of the church who put together beautiful bouquets and Gina and I were lucky to get one. And that was such a surprise and so delightful and I really appreciate it, thank you. I wanted to say some extra thanks for the, the people who sang today. Um, Natalia and Angela, mother and daughter a duet, you know, at, after the sermon by Sandra and Angela. And thank you to Candy for playing the recorder and, and Bob and Polly for, for doing the, the uh, curie today and with more to come, but it, it isn't easy. And um, just, just doing it remotely and, uh, it, it takes a lot of effort. So I'm very grateful. It, it, it's turning out very beautifully today. Thank you. I want to share thanks for my family and for this wonderful service and for this congregation. We've been doing this together for over a year and, and I think we rock. And thank you everybody who helped make this happen. God of love. You call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. As we prepare for Holy Communion, we remember that the early church began in homes. People shared the word and communed together. In this time, we too worship in our own homes and commune at a distance via the internet still gathered together as a people of faith with the real presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And now for the Lord's Prayer. You're invited to unmute and to say in the language of your choice, 
our Father, Amen. Amen. Please join us. Uh, stay on after the postlude for coffee hour. And now for the blessing. Children, by the grace of God, one in Christ and inspired by the Holy Spirit, rejoice in the resurrection and live in hope, peace, and joy. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. I don't like this version. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God.